Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking blob glowing orb effect using Adobe After Effects and Tau. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is create a new composition. I'm just going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document at 30 FPS and a duration of 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid. So I'm just going to call this BG. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the effect called gradient ramp. So I'm going to do a simple gradient uh, ramp here and I'm just going to be using color hunt for my colors. So this is the color scheme that I've chosen. I'm going to be uh, using this color here for most of the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it into that white area there. And then I'm going to swap the colors and I'm going to change it to a radial ramp. Now it looks pretty good as it is, but I'm just going to move the black a little bit further down. And I'm also going to move that dark kind of uh, blue just a little bit up. So you've got that kind of vignette happening there. So now once we have that, we can actually start to put in the plugin here. So I'm just going to create a new solid and I'm going to label this solid towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect called Tau. Now Tau is a plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please go and download it before continuing on with this tutorial. It is um, a paid plugin from Red Giant. So make sure you have it before continuing. So now that that's out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to come down to the path generator. And what we're going to do is we're just going to change the size to zero. And then what we are going to do is we're going to come down to segment. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the segment mode to a repeat sphere. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the sides to, we'll put in 200 for now, but we're going to increase this a little bit more just before rendering. So once we've got that, then we can come over here to the size and we can just increase the size until you're kind of happy with it. So I'll probably leave it around 290, something like that. Now, the cool thing here is you can change all of these values as well. Now, it doesn't look like much now because it's only a sphere, but we'll come back and we'll play around with some of these settings and this will all change. So once we've got that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to come down to the fractal displacement. So we're going to play around with some of these settings. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to bring up the amplitude. Now you can see what happens as I bring this value up. So you want something a bit more crazy, you can go, you know, much higher than what I'm going to put in. So maybe something around, you know, I don't know, 160, 150, something like that. We're also going to bring up the frequency a touch. Maybe we'll bring it to, let's say, somewhere around like 280, maybe even 250, something like that. And if you don't like the amplitude, you can always go and bring it back. So now once I've got that, you can also play around with some of the complexity settings here. So if I drop that down to one, now you've got a kind of smoother edge on all of these sides. And then you can go back into your amplitude and you can, you know, play around with some of these settings to create more unique effects. Now, obviously, you know, that does not uh, animate at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a play around with some of these evolution options. So you can see that by moving the evolution, you've got this cool kind of animation happening. So that's the first animation we're going to do. So I'm going to hold option on my Mac, click on that stopwatch. I'm going to write the expression time times 100. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you have this cool moving kind of morphing blob of orb whatever you want to call it and i think that's looking pretty good at the moment but we're going to make it look even better so what we're going to do is we are going to also add a animation for the offset x so i'm just going to hit that stopwatch make sure i'm on the first keyframe move to the end of the timeline and i'm going to bring that up to maybe let's say 900 and so now what that will create is that will create another animation that goes along with the evolution and this one will scroll across or offset across the x axis so i think that's looking pretty good as it is 
and we're just gonna add some other things to it. So now the next thing that we're gonna go down to is we're gonna go down to the material and lighting and we're just gonna change a few settings in here. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color. So I'm gonna go back to color hunt, I'm gonna choose the lightest color and I'm gonna import it back into my After Effects. So there's my color that I've put in there. It goes along with my color scheme, make sure the colors match. And now I'm gonna play around with some of these settings. So I'm gonna bring down the shininess to about 10. And so now you can kind of see those, um, you know, those kind of grooves forming. And that's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna also increase the Fresnel. So I'm gonna bring that up to maybe, let's say, maybe somewhere around 70 or so. And then I'm also going to increase the diffuse holdout. And so now we've got this, you know, you can start to see little bits of shadows in there, which is uh, actually looking really cool. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the image based lighting and we're just gonna increase the reflection strength. We're gonna double it to 200 each, all right? And that will help with our final overall kind of uh, product. We're also going to come down to the rendering and we're just gonna turn on the super sample and now it starts to get pretty CPU intense. So, you know, if you can go higher than this, sure, but I'll leave it at nine for now. So once we have that, that's pretty much our design. So we've got this kind of blob and if you go back to any of the settings in the segment part, then you can actually see what's going on. So you can really play around with some crazy effects in here. If you wanna, you know, do some changes to the Y or X as well, you can do that too. But the Z is probably the most interesting. And yeah, so maybe have a play around with that. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some effects to this. And so we need to make it look a little bit better. So the first effect that we're gonna do is I'm just gonna add an adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called glow. And what I'm gonna do here with the glow is I'm just gonna change some of the settings. So I'm gonna change the threshold. I'm gonna bring that up to about 90. I'm gonna change the glow radius. I'm gonna increase it by a lot and I'm also going to bring down the intensity to about 0.6 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that by pressing command D and so in the second variation of the glow I'm going to bring down the threshold to about 60 percent I'm going to bring down the glow radius to you know maybe five even two and i'm also going to bring down that intensity right down just so we have a little bit of glow on the side and it will all make sense once we uh, put everything else together the next thing that we can add in here is if i go to another new adjustment layer and i search for the effect called curves and now what i can do is i can just you know um bring down this line over here and i can bring this up to create a slight s bend so it gives it a little bit more contrast now still doesn't look that great here but once we go back into tower we'll make it look pretty good so the last adjustment layer that we're going to add to this is a little bit of noise so i'm just going to put maybe somewhere like 10 percent so now once we've finished the last adjustment layer, what we can do is we can go back to Tau and then we can go and find the fractal displacement section over here. And I'm just gonna increase the smooth and normals. I'm gonna bring that up maybe 10, maybe even a little bit more than that, 14. And that tries to smooth a lot of these kind of uh, imperfections out. But we'll also do something else to smooth it out right at the end. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the material and lighting and in the image based lighting. This option here, the built-in environment, if I click that, it's got a few kind of presets ready to go. And if I click on the sunset field, the sunset field creates this very nice kind of uh, texture I guess to this uh, shape so we've got a bit of glow or the glow that we have in our adjustment layers is working in there but you still have a little bit of imperfections on the rest of the the shape so what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back to the segment section over here and if I increase the sides to let's say 1000 that will kind of also smooth that out 
Now this is going to be very CPU intensive. So you have to make sure that you probably just render it out or if your computer is you know, good enough to be able to play that back, you can. So yeah, so here is an example of the animation of how it morphs and you know turns into blobs and things like that. So once you're ready to render it, yeah, just make sure you turn the sides up, you know, so uh, it looks a little bit smoother. And there you go. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this short tutorial on how to create a blob orb effect using Trapco Tower. I uh, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.